Welcome back to Let It Red 2024 edition. Um, this is our 10th episode together, just Stone and Griffin. Yes, <laughs> just um, us two right well, now. What is this? Episode like four of just Stone and Griffin. Probably three or four, three or four. somewhere around there. Probably yeah. three. Yeah, we took a we took a break, right? Yes, Christmas break. I mean, yeah, break. Christmas. We're all we're all gone. Obviously, we record this at state, so we're not <laughs> we're not here, and we kind of need a break anyways because we're both students. So took a little break. A lot of stuff happened um, in between then, but yeah, it's the tenth episode technically when it was relit, if you could say relighting it red. But I believe you started it what back in March somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, it's about to turn one year old, so wow. Project got it up and running, and it's been challenging, but it's I'd like it's cool, you I'd, know. I'd say pretty successful, to yeah, be honest, for the most part. More than more than maybe I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of people with a lot of podcasts, so it's hard. Yes, to, to absolutely. Make it all <laughs> so I feel like we we do an okay job at that. Yeah, hopefully. especially for being students and and you know being kind of secluded to one specific right. thing. But I'd say it's been pretty good, and we're, we still got more to come. We got a whole semester and more. Uh, we're not really looking to stop anytime soon. So stay with us, and uh, you'll, you'll, you won't regret it, I bet you. I Maybe. Maybe. But. I can, there are some <laughs> episodes that I regret. I mean, probably, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you kind of got to have those. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But there's only one way to find out you know facts so um what do we do formatting wise i feel like we're we're sticking to our our old routine our 2023 model partly yeah i'd say in the future we could be staying tuned you know for kind of anything anything's on the table to be honest uh obviously the whole premise is going to be sports but um we'll kind of just talk about whatever we're feeling sometimes you know i this this episode though is definitely more tailored to sports just because you know we are back after a good break and there's been a lot of stuff that's happened football season i believe the last episode we did ended with projecting the unc game in football and now football season is long gone spring sports are underway so we ha- do have a lot to dive in um but it'll kind of be a mix of different stuff in the future for new episodes You've been keeping up with all the sports? Absolutely. I don't know if you've been. Uh, I do because we talked about it beforehand, but you're up to date now with uh, all the current happenings of NC State. But uh, obviously with football, definitely followed um, all that stuff. And then basketball, for both men and women, I've been you know, deliberately following. Uh, football is kind of my number one, I'd say, but basketball is absolutely right there for me. Um, I love following that all the time, especially college basketball, to be honest. That's my favorite. I think you're more of an NBA guy, Raptors fan. Yeah. It's been tough. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I still follow NBA a lot. Like, you know, I just, I don't follow it through the regular season as much and I'm a Hornets fan, so there's nothing to follow anyways. Even tougher. Yeah. Yeah. It's irrelevant, but. Um, yeah, we are in college basketball season now and, uh, it's fun. It should be good, but, uh, we won't start there. We can start off with some other sports, just really quick updates, um, on, we're not going to go too in depth, but they are happening in the fall and we just want to bring them, or I mean, not in the fall, but in the spring. And we just want to kind of bring them up. You talking about spring sports or winter sports or winter? I guess winter slash it'll, it'll spring. They're technically yeah. winter sports. Yeah, technically. So get it right. My bad. So. Yeah, we are in January, so yeah. it's not really spring. Yeah. <laughs> it is winter. Um, yeah. Well, what are our winter sports that have you? I, I be honest with you, like, I've been focusing on a couple of things, um, over winter break, like, career wise and like. Social wise, none of them. You didn't really consist. Of, you didn't engage in wrestling or swimming or gymnastics following. Uh, you know, over the break. Like I'm sure every other. I, I mean, every other human definitely did, right? I, I've been watching a little bit of wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Some different wrestling uh, involving <laughs> many people. <laughs> They're called uh, micros. Oh, micros. Micro wrestling. If you don't know, Griffin went to a micro wrestling. <laughs> meet i believe what was that yesterday two days Uh, ago it was on saturday saturday nice yeah 
Yeah, it was um they got I'm a big Jamaican Joe fan. Oh, Jamaican really? <laughs> he did not win. Dang. I who thought, won? Um this guy named Little Show. It's Little like, Show. It's like the big show. But the but Little, little show. show. That's fitting to be honest. And then um this guy Hot Rod won. He goes, "It's your boy Hot Rod." Hot Rod? You ever seen the TikToks? No, ironically, no. Yeah. I don't have TikTok. Well, if you're on TikTok, look up Micro Wrestling Roll Call because <laughs> that's like my new favorite thing right now. Micro Wrestling. Yeah. There's this one guy. His name's Micro Tiger. He goes, Micro Tiger, meow. <laughs> that's my favorite. I He's my favorite. He's like a luchador. He wears oh, a for... mask. <laughs> <laughs> They have a show on Discovery, under the Discovery Channel, I think, or Discovery Plus. Big Little Brawlers. Big Little Brawlers? They have yeah. their own show? It just got launched, yeah. I wonder how long it'll last. Probably a long time. They're yeah. pretty if you keep watching it, I'm sure it'll last I've a long time. I've never seen it, but I might because I like Micro Tiger. <laughs> um, Is he on there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, so that's the wrestling that I've yes. been consuming. Well, if that's what you, you know, clearly you've been interested in that. So getting off your little little people tangent with your interests, uh, what has been going on in wrestling? Has there even been any wrestling in the past month or so? Uh, I think in WWE they're coming to <laughs> PNC in March. So I'll probably go to that. Yeah. Um, what about um. What's the thing? What uh maybe the whole what's the whole point of this podcast? NC State. What about NC State wrestling? They what's going on with them? Are not going to be at PNC. Do we, and you know what NC State, NC State maybe they should have a little people team. I don't think we have that many little people that go to NC State. Maybe you could recruit them and be like the coach. You could be the coach for it. I'm not that's not my circus. Well, I don't watch Do you watch NC State wrestling? I mean, <laughs> not necessarily, no. but uh, we still cover it, right? Yeah. You know? Is that the where the guy was like, grab his dick and twist it? <laughs> that where that meme was from? Yeah. yeah I think it was at was a wrestling, wrestling match. Yeah. Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but oh well, we just did. Um, <laughs> well, that's what I would say if I was at a wrestling meet. Nice. Well,. That's probably our wrestling coverage anyways. I don't even think they've been doing anything, to be honest. No, I wrote down what they, I mean, they're 10-2, and two, and they lost to Ohio State and Oklahoma State. Those were the two losses. But, like, I don't, I should probably go, like, because I'm the sports editor of the yearbook, so I probably. <laughs> Might be a good idea. I'll go to the one against Carolina on the second. That's my plan. Um, My editor-in-chief, Jermaine, he's all over that. I just. It's so weird how some people get in. I don't think he wrestled, but, like, he's just really into it. Kind of like I got into gymnastics last year for no reason. Like, I've never done gymnastics. I just kind of got stuck with it, and I was like, okay, well, you know, so. Yeah, I did gymnastics when I was a kid. Did you actually? Yeah, for, like, two years. What did you do? I was pretty good. Like, what did you do? I mean, it was just, like, training stuff that we did. We didn't go to meets or anything. It was, like, a separate training thing. And if you wanted to, you'd... You would do that, and then it'd be like if you want to join some sort of like group or whatever that does go on meets, then you'd be like, "Oh, I went to this whole training thing. I'm prepared or whatever." But I'm, you know, I never did any of that. <laughs> but it was fun. You know, did did all the balancing stuff and jumping. It was cool. It's kind of I always viewed it as just like being at like a park, like an inside park. That's kind of all <laughs> maybe you'd for. like parkour. I, I it probably would. Seems fun. They have gyms like for that. Really? Yeah. Parkour I've seen gyms. like tag tournaments. Have you seen those? Yeah, I've seen those. Like play tag and to like jump and dive through like all these bars and stuff. That yeah. looks pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I have a friend. Or I went to I went to I didn't go to high school with him, but I was friends with him while I was in high school. He does parkour and he's pretty good at it. Really? Yeah. He's like it's like a really big deal to him. Like I don't know. I like I can appreciate getting into it. Is it just a hobby or does he make no. money or record himself? No, or? he records himself on like TikTok and stuff. Is he popular? Uh, that's a <laughs> good question. Maybe maybe one day he will be. Who knows? I think 
I think he puts a lot of effort into it and he he probably has a couple of videos that have a lot of views. I should probably view them. I don't know. Yeah, I went to college. <laughs> should probably view I went to my friends. And, stuff. I went to college and we stopped you know hanging out as much. Yeah. But I get that. Like that happens. I don't know. I, I thought it was like funny at first, like parkour. But some people take it pretty seriously. Yeah. I mean, it's, you think of The Office. Yeah, a lot of hobbies people do. You know The Office? Yes, the of course. I love The Office. Roll and do parkour and stuff. <laughs> yes. It, like opens the refrigerator door parkour. and closes it and does parkour. <laughs> like, backflip gainer into the trash can. <laughs> Maybe we should do that. Just like. You did gymnastics. Dumb shit. So yeah. yeah. I'll be like, boom. Backflip gainer. Okay, well, I can't do a backflip. <laughs> These Maybe girls can, though. The actual bet, gymnastics team. Or DJ Burns doing parkour. Oh, my God. DJ Burns doing... Or, like, the tag thing, chasing... <laughs> I feel like I'd be able to smoke him if I did that. Yeah. Wouldn't be close, no. I feel like he... Yeah, I don't know. No, wouldn't be close. Imagine he's just, like, really, like, athletic and flexible. That would be insane. And I'd be like, why are you not doing this... As much on the basketball court. Or wrestling. To be fair, though, he has been... I mean, we'll get into basketball soon but he has been like in this episode he, he's not been bad he's been pretty good yeah um, yeah i've been seeing him and hey, you know that that meme though where the bald guy's like staring at the guy or staring at the screen like yeah where his eyes are and yeah, it's like that like song or whatever wide. it's like one eye yeah yeah that guy <laughs> what that guy's a wrestler <laughs> he is yeah i was looking it up i was in i was at work looking it up and he's like no like a wrestler like 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 real wrestling, like oh, not like fake, like Olympic. What? Like Olympic. really? Yeah, I didn't know that. He won like a gold medal in the Olympics. Is that like a known thing? No, or? no. I looked it up. I was like bald guy staring meme, <laughs> and Kurt Angle came up. Is his that his name? Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. The name sounds familiar though. Well, if you look it up, the first thing that comes up is WWE, because he did wow. WWE after he won the Olympics. What does that mean from? Of, is it just a video of him, like the meme? Yeah. What is it from? I think it's from a TikTok that he recorded and put on his <laughs> oh. <laughs> TikTok, where like the guy forgot to stop recording. So <laughs> oh, that's stare. what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it's pretty much been the biggest meme the past like yeah month or so. Some random WWE. I mean, any I don't question anything could be a meme at this yeah. point. I don't question it at all. It's. I don't know. I've got. It just seems to keep coming up. Really, like wrestling, you know, like they're like in the be world. At PNC in my life. Oh, in your life. I don't know. It keeps getting brought back to me. Well, yeah. we brought it back to you here with NC State. I know wrestling. Are you? You should. Do you want to go to the March thing, the WWE show? But sure. I've never been to, to anything like that. It's like kind of cool. Yeah. I some people would be like, "You're lame for going to that though." <laughs> Maybe, so. but who cares what other people think? Yeah, you know that's, that's why we're saying. doing this podcast. Right. We don't care what other people think. That's why we even do it. Exactly. But uh, after our tangent on memes and wrestling, um, we were bringing up gymnastics. Uh, this gymnastics team, I did gymnastics, but I'm not as good as any of the girls that are here. Unfortunately, though, they are zero and four um, oh, in their past that. four meets. Yeah, uh, not great, but. Um, their recent loss, they normally do like quad meets or shows. Sorry if I don't have the correct terminology. They do quad meets like towards the end of the season. What's crazy about quad meets is when I first started covering it, like if you do a quad meet and you place first, you get three wins on your record. Really? But if you get last, you get three losses. Wow. Yeah. So it's like you're not even really competing against the other team. You're competing against the scores. First. Yeah. Well, Which I mean, we've weird. been relatively close. Uh, the most recent one we did, um, we lost to three colleges that were in the top 25 in the mm. gymnastics rankings. One of them was Cal, who was ranked number two. ACC. Yeah, so a future ACC, yeah. So that that was kind of hard. But um, our next matchup is an individual one, just versus UNC. Uh, they're currently ranked 45th, and we are 37th, so we are favored. Um, we are six and four in our last ten matchups versus them. It's going to be at UNC. Uh, the last ten times we've been at UNC, we're five and five. So um, I feel like we could have some potential hope to win that game and maybe get, or I, I don't say game, but meet. Uh, meet, yeah, and get our first first W on the board there for gymnastics team. Yeah. But that 
is the quick update on other sports and other random crap and, that we brought up. Well, ants, we forgot swimming and diving. Oh, yeah, swimming. What's up with swimming? Do they well, have anything going on? They have a, a swim meet on the 26th, so two weeks, and they're hosting Texas. Other than that, I don't really know. If, like, if you like swimming and diving, hit us up at light at red ncsu yeah our instagram we have an instagram um because i don't know like what's going on with that or like the scoring i don't know how the scoring works so like i'm not i'm not gonna like speak on it and say like they're good or bad because yeah. like, i have no f- clue so it, and if you're on the team it, we we got to get you know athletes on here too so if you want to like promote your sport then yeah hit us up so we can talk about swimming and diving more. Yeah, we want to cover anything and everything to do with NC State. So if there's some stuff that we're just not as familiar with, or that's not some, I feel like NC State sometimes doesn't do a good job of like getting other sports fully out there. Like they make it a little bit confusing. Even if you just go on the website, like it's kind of hard to really be like, okay, why are they doing? When are they doing something next? Where is it? How is does the scoring work? I don't know. I feel like they could do a better job of that, but. Um, maybe that's just us not not knowing enough. Who knows? But uh, yeah, as Griffin said, if you have anything to do with swimming or anything, let us know. We'd uh, love to know. But they will be, as you said, going against Texas on the 26th. Do you know how to swim? Yes. Why would I not know how to swim? I don't know. Yeah, I do. You know look how to like swim. you wouldn't know how to that's swim. That's n- not no. That makes no sense. Of, of course, I know how to swim. I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good swimmer. You think you could be on the swimming team? No. I could be pretty good at something, but not be like on a collegiate level thing. I'm pretty good at Smash, but if I go to a Smash tournament, I'm gonna get smoked. Smash Bros. Like, yeah, I just can't. One of my roommates, my freshman year, I think he's on the swim team at UNC Charlotte. Really? I th- like maybe a club team. I'm oh. not sure. Oh, I don't know. May- I don't know what the deal is with that school. Who knows? They don't, they don't promote their athletics. Charlotte they don't talk about schools. Charlotte's like the most like basic like whatever school to me you know like all the people who like can't get into relatively higher up like i would consider nc state in that because their acceptance rate is below 50 percent like nc state unc all the kind of stuff but like you're not trying to go to like ecu you know they're like right like right there like a little bit below the median like you know no offense anyone that goes there but that's that's kind of what they feel also like it's a safety school. Yeah, it is. None of their programs either. Like, like I, I have friends that go. I have a lot of friends that go there. Probably the most, at least in, like in terms of my friend group, the most amount of people go to Charlotte. Some of them don't follow sports, but even the ones that do, I mean, they follow it, but it's not like, oh, my gosh, like we're dedicated. Like, this is it. It's kind of just like, you know, whatever. Yeah. I will say they, I mean, they had a, they've had, I think they um, beat or almost beat FAU. In basketball, which FAU is a ranked team because they obviously made it to the Final Four last year. So that's good for them. Um, but I think they are kind of a revolving door in a lot of other yeah. sports. When I went there, they beat Duke in football the first week. Oh, yeah, that's right. And proceeded to lose every, every single, single game. <laughs> and then the next year, they had one of the worst records in college football. And Duke, yeah, they didn't end up doing much anyways. But yeah. uh, so they're, you get to ride on that high. Know. Yeah, it was cool. I didn't even go to it, though, because I was, like, depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what am I doing here? Well, now you're happy doing Light at Red at yeah, NC State. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, good. There's a, I would say that, you know, I'm not going to bash UNC Charlotte, but I would say that there's a bit of a culture issue. Really? With, like, I mean, if you want to talk about, like, school spirit and, like, sports and stuff. You don't think they have it? I, I think that it's a, I mean, it's a newer school. But there's not like an established like culture. Culture, there. I agree with that. If you don't know, Griffin did go there um, for what was it a year or two? A whole year. A year. I have a lot of friends that've been there. I've been there a few times. They have some. Some of their buildings are like cool because they're just trying to make more amenities there. I'd say and get more people to go there, which is probably why they're building a lot of cool stuff. So that's a pretty big bonus. Unfortunately, I feel the people that go there like aren't being able to. Like, they're trying to establish the culture immediately, and if that happens, which it could, it won't be in full effect in like until, like, eight years or four years down the line to where those people will be like, oh, yeah, like, go Niners, blah, 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 you know? 
not like the following that wolf. I mean, if you've ever even driven, you can't, by the way, drive by on an NC State Saturday when they have football. Like, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. They have the amount of, even just, a lot of it's not even all just students, like returning people, you know, parents, all that good stuff, tailgating. Right. It's unmatched um, in terms of just North the state of North Carolina, let alone the East Coast. Right. I think NC State's up there. Yeah, I don't think Charlotte will ever be what we have here on um, in the Triangle. Yeah, you know, with with I mean Duke and Carolina and NC State are the the big three. And I mean, I the, just, yeah, it's like well, you got the Panthers and the Hornets over there. It's it's hard for people to really. That's I think there's a that's a reason why we don't have probably a lot of pro sports in Raleigh, is because college sports are just so more dominant. dominant. Yeah. So I mean, we do have the Hurricanes, which has a pretty good following as well. We have no college say. hockey. No. Yeah. So it's like there's the trade off, you know. Yeah. Which it works pretty well. I think that's, they did a good job. But in Charlotte, yeah, it's like you follow the pro teams in downtown. Um, and they're both crap. So I guess that goes to show not how much, just not, they just don't have the level of cachet or power that we do. But enough dogging on them. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Charlotte. I don't uh, care. But we can get into our best moments of 2023, that being NC State. Uh, we're going to do the fall 2023 semester, kind of when we, that being Griffin and I, like both came together and we're doing the podcast. Uh, we wrote down a few things here, and then after that, we'll get into um, NC State men and women's basketball, their kind of current landscape, because we haven't really been able to fully dive into them, because obviously last episode, we were ending on, you know, the football season was still going on. Um, but the first one, if you want to go over, um, I think <laughs> it was one of the few times we actually did, you know, light the tower red for volleyball, like, like physically actually doing it at NC State. Um, and it was a pretty great one. I, bring, I think probably one of their best wins in program history, no? Yeah, I think when we walked away that day from that game. Well, the, for I against Louisville, sorry. I didn't say what it was. But we beat Louisville, which Louisville was ranked, third, I believe, in the top five, third, third, three. third in the entire country. Yeah, yeah. What was the date, do you remember? It was, it was October. It was sometime in October, I believe so. Yeah, so that was uh, I had been to a couple of volleyball games, and um, I think this season, I mean, the, yeah, the biggest moment from their season came that night in October against Louisville, who I think ended up making the postseason anyways. But did you keep up with the volleyball postseason? Well, we. It ended. We didn't make it. No, our season ended like um, while we were still here because we had brought it up. Like oh. it was a pretty big downfall. After that, like we had a lot of high expectations, and then after that law, after that win, like we went. It, we already covered this in the episode. This was the Chick Fil A game where they didn't give me a sandwich at Pitt, where it was horrible, and we got smoked in that game. That was the one. That was the first game I went to with you, and after that, we like we. We're just up and down, up and down, up and down. We went like five and five in our last ten, and just did not really end the season off as strong as we had hoped. So that was really unfortunate. But the Louisville win was still a good thing to to look back on. Yeah, I the think season. the way that the the season ended made that moment probably even more significant. Yeah, um, meaningful. It was definitely the most like media coverage that I had seen at a volleyball game. Like they had the post game press conference. Usually, it's just like me. Just me with like my phone. Yeah. They had like the like I think Amanda Rice put on a whole headset and like talking That's to cool. somebody and so even when we went there I got jealous. Like when we went there, we the first game I had gone to with you was this was the pit game, as I said, but it was after the Louisville game, so it already happened. It wasn't just us. There were a few people there. So clearly they got more coverage for that game in future matchups. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad because I think Louis I think Volleyball as a sport itself is one of the more underrated sports in general. I think it's really fun to watch, and I think the environment is pretty cool. Um, and it's not that hard to follow either. Like, you know, the terminology is just something you have to get used to, like aces, sets, and stuff like that, and how all that works. But um, it's pretty easy. You get three chances to hit, you know, 
hit it in in their uh, set square. Um, and it's really fun to to watch and follow. Um, so maybe next year we could. Uh, I think we've had a few of them are pretty young. We didn't have like a crazy amount of seniors. Um, so maybe we could pick up where we left off a little bit from the Louisville game and yeah, yeah, get a more had, consistent season. They only had two, I think, seniors exit the program. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, that's at the top of the list, definitely for me. We're going to talk about a couple of other different things, but of all the things that I was at, I think I felt like the most energy was captured on that night. Yeah. In, in any gym. Like, I don't, that was the same gym that the women's basketball team beat UConn in, which we'll talk about, but I felt like that volleyball game was like right there with that, if not, you know, greater as greater. far as you could tell. I mean, both teams, both teams were really like pumped, but that Louisville game was like over halfway into the season. Like the, it meant a lot to them, obviously. Yeah. And they haven't had as much success as our women's basketball team. So yeah. that's why. That's awesome. Well, hopefully they can do that next year, maybe. Um, and then with soccer, we have nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, they were horrendous. I can't even give any sort of meaningful game to them, so we're not going to. Uh, That's <laughs> Unfortunately, sorry. They, f- yeah, they fired their – who they hire? They their hired... coach. We, Yeah, I don't I even know who they hired. I can't remember. They, the guy they hired, I think, is from a Northeastern school. I think – not UConn. I'm not sure. Oh man, I don't know where they hired him. From. They hired. Hi- He's he, a young guy, though. I think, right? Ah, uh, I wish I. I'm gonna have to look it up. You're gonna have to come back to me, but that's fine. He he has like accolades to his name. Oh, so that's exciting. Well, that's cool. And they hired an assistant recently too. So hopefully the men's team can turn it around. But I think for the women's team, even though they didn't have any good like finishes to any games, it's like historically they, I mean, in the past five years they've been good. This probably last one was what. Probably one of their worst. Or this last season seasons. was one of their worst seasons yeah. under Coach Which Santoro. We had, when we went over both of the sports, we definitely came away saying women's was better than men's. Um, they Because the women's ended up finishing the season. They played, like, two of the best teams, and they, like, tied both of them, I think, um, which was, like, huge. And then they went in the ACC tournament and lost. So that was unfortunate. But um, soccer, not really, not really anything to go look back on. Uh, after this season, cross country, they had their three peat, so that was awesome. Uh, very good for them. They've just been dominating <laughs> for the past three years, uh, so that's cool that we have some sort of dominant program to you know acknowledge and look back on. We've brought them up a few times, so no need to go in super in depth. And there's not as much like I don't know analysis needed for cross cross country. It's just kind of like you know stamina and running and all that stuff, and we've we're pretty dominant at that. So that's that's awesome for them. Yeah. yeah, my only qualm with cross country is just like it's so hard to like follow, cover and follow. Yeah. Like they have such a limited amount of um meets in the year, so it's like if you don't get to I mean, they don't even run in Raleigh, they run in Cary. And some of them just train like they're they aren't in a ton of meets. They just like get ready for that right. one meet. The top athletes, the top performers, don't run in like the first three or four meets of the season until maybe there's like one left, or it's just like the regionals or like. So it's just like almost impossible to see our best athletes run, and then and then they're gone basically. Yeah. So that kind of sucked. I was a little irritated about that as far as far as being the sports editor of agromech it's like for photos and stories it's just it makes it a lot harder to cover something like that which if you don't know agromech is the they do the yearbook for nc state um griffin is the lead sports editor there and uh since meeting him through this podcast i helped him do a lot of stuff for sports coverage um as well and writing stuff in the yearbook um did you ever get the coaches name for soccer or is yeah, it yeah his name is mark hubbard where is he from new hampshire what where did he come from in college new hampshire oh university oh that university yeah. okay he it says Northern seven guy. straight ncaa tournament appearances since 2017 for new hampshire well we would 
<laughs> love to have at least an appearance, uh, let alone consistent ones. So yeah. hopefully so you can do that cool. for them. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and then we can uh, talk about this before the football recap. Basketball, we kind of brought it up versus UConn. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to go in more depth into basketball, um, but you kind of brought it up earlier. I think the Louisville volleyball game definitely had more cachet to it and like meaning. But this one was still awesome. It was still like a huge deal that they beat. And it kind of kick-started their season so far to being pretty successful. Yeah. Yeah, that game, if it, yeah, it was the second game in the season. So I feel like that's why it was really, like, it was exciting. But it's like, with basketball, you don't know, like, if a team finishes poorly, like, if UConn just, like, lost all their games after that, it wouldn't You would be like, oh, anything. it wouldn't mean as much, yeah. So that was the scary part for me. However, I actually don't know how good UConn is doing. Do you? Uh, they are doing good as always. Um, well, they're not doing as good though. Like they're not. They were I mean, like ranked I, like I relatively top three. in terms of like. I mean, yeah, in terms of them being like number one year in and year out, uh, they are ranked number nine right now. Um, and what are we ranked? We are fourth, I believe. Four? So that's fine. But I mean, if you think about it, nine is what a top three seed, maybe two seed. In the tournament, in terms of rankings, which they could obviously win the whole thing, and they're still very good. Because tournament time, you don't view it like, oh, this is the number, we're AP number two, and they're AP number seven. No, it's just we're one seed, they're two seed. And when you look at it that way, it's like, okay, this is anyone's game. Um, but hopefully, we can uh, progress and maybe match them again in the tournament, if that comes down to it. Um, but then we can end this uh, best state sports moments of 2023 off with a little bit of a football season recap. Um, we First thing we can go into, I guess, would be the high in terms because we're talking about the best state sports moments, even though I do plan on going just into the season a little bit. Uh, and that is definitely, at least in my opinion, the UNC game. We kind of, uh, we ended off the 2023 year with Light at Red talking about the game and my kind of takeaway was like hey like this is totally winnable i think we weren't favored we were underdogs i remember taking us in that game and it was like we you bet on the game yeah that's not legal what do you mean i'm 21 yeah but north carolina it's not legal yet yeah we're legal Mm-mm. yeah we're good plus this fliff, is inc- fliff this is, is incriminating evidence no right fliff here. fliff is also a site if you don't if you know you know it's a pretty good um uh app to use uh, that you know doesn't matter about state, uh-huh. but even then, I don't think they're gonna come get me for betting five dollars on NC State. How much did you plus make? three? I mean, what ten? Oh. Just doubled it. Was it? Nice. it? Was a big deal. But it was pretty. Uh, I mean, we were not favors. We were not. We were underdogs at home, and our trajectory was like complete opposite directions. Like we were looking up, they were looking down, and it was the team's best overall game, hundred percent. Uh, they got two interceptions on Drake May, ending his season and his career with Carolina, and he'll be going to the NFL. Armstrong had 350 total yards, three touchdowns, zero turnovers, his best game by far. KC Concepcion had nearly uh, 200 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns, and it was uh, Peyton Wilson's last home game. And he finished with 15 tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, and an interception. This is the last college game. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Uh, and, and the interception that he had was literally the last throw that Drake May made <laughs> as a Tar Heel. So he ended his career, uh, and it was just a perfect culmination of everything um, for the team. And that was kind of our, our Super Bowl, if you want to use a term, just for a big game. Can we, uh, can we talk about the Pop Tarts Bowl? Um, unfortunately, we do have to. Um, but it was I wrote down here like, just underlined it was pure disappointment. Like that's what it was. Because if you don't know, we reached we reached nine wins with the UNC win because we had went on a huge run, beating like Miami, uh, Clemson, uh, wait Virginia Tech, to then beat UNC and we reached nine games, nine wins. And it was like, okay, like we're going to be in a big bowl game and we could get to 10 wins, which hasn't happened in the past, like what, seven years or something like that under Dave Doran. And we get the pop tart bowl, which is like a super funny gag and like a, like pretty, 
I'd say I got a decent amount of coverage just because of how it would be funny. Can I be a hater for yeah, a second? Yeah, go for it. I didn't like the coverage of the Pop-Tart. You didn't? No, I thought it was annoying. Why? Because I'm not going to like call anybody out, but the people that were consuming the Pop-Tart coverage, were the, that was the annoying part. They were like, oh, the Pop-Tart this, the Pop-Tart that. Like, can we eat the Pop-Tart? <laughs> It's a pop tart. You're saying it was like played out. Like relax, <laughs> relax. Like when they said like the trophy or a... mascot would be edible or something like that. Well, there were some people, like some people, that just like could not get enough of this pop tart. You didn't like that. Well, it just made me think they were stupid. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I maybe not want to watch the game. <laughs> Did you watch the game? No, no, you didn't even watch. <laughs> well, you didn't miss out on like, you know, if you were optimistic at least, because I was optimistic. I did not go to the game. Obviously, it was in Florida. Um, I think it was in what was it in Orlando? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I watched the game because, or I had to. Um, Dropped my neighbor off, and I went to, like, one of his basketball, mini basketball tournaments or whatever. Um, he's uh, he's in high school. He plays basketball. And uh, I was, like, watching the game on my phone there. And then when I got home, and it wasn't, it wasn't really a blowout. We kind of just really felt the loss of Peyton Wilson, in my opinion, because he did not play that game. Um, if you don't know, a lot of – high-profile college players don't necessarily play uh, regular bowl games unless it is the college football playoff. A lot of people played in that. Uh, high-profile meaning that they're probably going to the NFL, which I think a cool thing for us come NFL draft time that we're going to be able to cover is Peyton Wilson being drafted because he will be drafted in the NFL. It just depends on, obviously, where, the location, and where in terms of you know picks. Where is he going to be picked? But he did not play. Uh, and I think we also felt the issues of having only one viable weapon, which is KC, um, and that really took a toll on the offense. Uh, Armstrong wasn't even that bad. People hate him, obviously. I have not been a full hater. I feel like I'm just a realist with him, and it was 100% correct. I'm going to keep saying that till I die. Literally was. Um, and I, like when we talk about him before, obviously people hate him because the Louisville game, which was bad. That was totally bad. Um, but this game... It, it was, I don't really blame it on him. He had 121 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown, which in itself is very good. Uh, obviously, he did have an interception, um, but it was towards the end of the game, and it was because we were just obviously trying to throw the ball a ton to get back into the game because we were down by two possessions, um, and that's because the defense really missed Peyton Wilson. Uh, they had 15 missed tackles in total. Um, we, I think Kansas State was four for four on fourth down conversions, which if you just stop like half of those, we have a chance to go down there and, you know, obviously score more points in it. Some, I think one of the drives, they went forward on fourth and got it two times, which led to a touchdown, which if you stop them on one of them, that takes away points entirely and that gives us good field position. So four for four on fourth down is huge. Uh, we also didn't get a single sack on the game. We had a missed field goal that would have made it a one possession game meaning we wouldn't have needed to just hurry up and throw the ball down the field to score a touchdown. We could have taken our time and given it maybe KC running it or Armstrong running it more than rather having, you know, Armstrong trying trying to just chuck a throw and chuck it up, which eventually was picked. Um, So I think there's a ton of context um, to that game, and I don't really view it as well. Uh, Armstrong's fault. I mean, we literally wouldn't have been in it. If he didn't have 121 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown, I think he did a pretty good job of taking what the defense gave him. Of like, hey, they're going to double team KC. All my other weapons suck. Besides um, our tight end, I actually really liked him. He had a pretty good game. He had a nice wide open touchdown. Which one? Um, I forget. It's a Penix. starter. Didn't even write. Yeah. Yeah. Penix. Um, but other than that, I, I kind of feel the defense. And uh, Kansas State. This was their. They had a freshman first year quarterback playing. Dude, it was his first game. I did watch the beginning of that, and you're talking about like rushing quarterbacks. Like that dude's got it. Who? Kansas State. Kansas State. Yeah, he, he was a. I think it was a four or five star recruit. 
Uh, it was his first game, which obviously they're pretty high recruit, so that's good. But still, it's his first college game. Like our defense has been amazing. That was super disappointing, giving up twenty eight points to a group that didn't have their starting quarterback. You know, that was that was really upsetting. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'd say our just when you look at the season in general, um, I'd say our combination of like, you know, we could say it. We had a lot of unconventional wins. Like we weren't really winning the way you think we would um, with some of these these early season Ws. Um, but we also had a lot of unfortunate games that were totally winnable losses, like Louisville. Totally could have won that game. Missed field goals led to that. Uh, and then this game I think was definitely possible. You know, like I said, the fourth down conversions, missed tackles, all that is pretty big and missed field goal into why we lost. But – I would I would say overall with those two things I think a nine win season feels like a, the correct amount of wins that we probably w- would have and should have had it just came in an insane way obviously with MJ Morris quarterback changes all that stuff uh, but next year which we can go into this in a ne- another episode of of the transfer class that we have because if you haven't been following it looks very good um, and as I said we can cover another episode but I think we could potentially expect maybe even a little bit more with next year's squad um which would obviously indicate that we could try and reach that double digit win mark i'm not trying to guarantee anything but um next year i think we could be looking up a little bit uh with the new regime of players that we have so we'd be so back yeah we would be so back nice we are so back hopefully i saw that aiden white Entered the transfer portal and then exited the transfer portal. And he came back. Yep. <laughs> came back. That's about all I saw. We we got a few. We'll talk about it another episode, but we we got a few ones that I, I do really like. I think that'll help a ton, especially on offense. Yeah. They'll just be trying to find, like, okay, can the defense make up for the loss of Peyton Wilson? Like, pro- having younger guys progress and the other transfers that we got, can they try and fill the hole? Because, as we said, in the K-State game – it was a huge hole that was left by him, which I think maybe goes to show how valuable he could be um, as a future player in the NFL, which would be really cool. Um, well, let's condense our basketball segment a little bit here, but um, you wanted to talk about what they've done so far and then maybe what they could do as far as like getting into the tournament and stuff. Like, yeah, like that, right? um, I could – shorten women a little bit just because I think um, we're kind of just waiting for the tournament to start for them. They've had an awesome start, 14-0. and uh, Unfortunately, they did suffer their first loss recently, which moved us from AP number three to number six. Um, but with a few teams losing, we're back up to number four, so we're back to a projected one seed. We have six players averaging double figures, which I believe is the most or second most in the ACC. Uh the team itself is top five in points in general, as well as points allowed and field goal percentage and point differential in the ACC. The only other team to be top five in those stats is Virginia Tech, which is our only loss of the season. But it was at Virginia Tech with a game winning, you know, put back shot that happened at the last second. And Virginia Tech also has two, a really nice pair of like, uh, centers and forwards on their team that are both going to go to the WNBA. So not a bad loss at all. Um, We're currently the projected two seed, but that'll probably be a one seed when it comes down to it. Uh, But the ACC is projected to have eight to nine tournament teams in women's. So uh, which would be tied most for any conference. Yeah. So we'll we'll definitely have some competition there, but I think we're kind of just expecting us to win. Maybe we'll lose a game or two here and there, but that happens in college basketball. So I think we're just kind of waiting to see, like, okay, are we going to win the ACC tournament? And then where are we going to place in the NCAA tournament for women's? Yeah. The only thing that I'll add about women's basketball right now is just, I don't know if I've said this before, but, like, I'm so impressed with how they've, like, turned it around from last year. Yeah. Because they were good the year before that, and then they came in, and just kind of like belly flopped a little bit. Um, and so me being at NC State 
for my first, that was my first year here. I was not really expecting them with a lot of similar personnel to be able to do what they're doing. Um, and what they are doing is among, you know, a pretty rare group of teams. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to have this level of success and sustain it. And they've just done it. Um, and the stats back it up and they have, you know, they have star players. Shania, Shania Rivers, Shania Rivers and, and Isaiah James. Was River, was she there last year? The center? Shania Rivers, oh, River Baldwin? Yeah, was River Baldwin yeah, there? Yeah, all of their statistical leaders were there last year. Okay, So wow. that's why I was, like, not, they, I mean, they just committed to getting better. I think that's a good sign of coaching and progression. And, I agree. And all that, because they're right up there with, like, South Carolina, who's trying to build their own dynasty Iowa with the best player in the entire country and probably one of the best players in women's basketball, including professional in general, in Caitlin Clark. Um, so that's that's a pretty good sign when you're up there with teams like that. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, chemistry is a huge thing in these sports that sometimes we underrate, which yeah. I think. It doesn't really, it, it's not something that shows up on the box score, so it's kind of hard to, which right. is why I'm a, definitely a, believer as much as i say stats all the time i think they both live like watching the game and following the context of the team and then looking at the stats i think they both you know combine to where it gives you like the best possible evaluation of a sport or team okay uh, on to men's but that's women's uh men's is a different story <laughs> we uh are definitely actively following the season more just because uh we are not guaranteed a tournament spot uh, is there still hope for one? Yes, there definitely is. But uh, we're going to be hoping and wondering all the way up until Selection Sunday when they release who's in. Uh, currently, I'd say we're on the bubble for the bubble. <laughs> like when you look at the real bubble teams, we're outside of that, which is not an amazing spot to be, but we're there. At least we're there. Uh, our losses that we have are not bad at all. We lost by nine to at Tennessee, who's a top 10 team. We lost to BYU, who's a top 20 team. They were not at the time, so they've been much better. We got blown out by Ole Miss, but they're 15-1, and one, and they've been ranked. So they're much better than we thought. And then we lost to UNC, which as much as people hate it, I went to that game, and it really sucked. We were doing good in the first half. I have a few notes on that game because um, that's kind of the one that we were like, okay, could we do something here? First half was a little, you know, we were a little bit hopeful. Second half totally fell apart. Um, they're a top five team. They're a projected one two seed. So, you know, as much as it sucks, they, they're gonna be good. They're gonna be very good. They're right there with Duke. Um, but I'd say in terms of rankings, where we are right now, we're kind of like in the low seventies range, which obviously if you think about it, the field of it's technically the field of sixty eight of teams who get in there, half of those teams are automatic qualifiers. Meaning that's why you see a lot of like, you know, uh FDU and Florida Gulf Coast and Oral Roberts, like that's because those lower colleges won their conference. And there's a ton of conferences. There's 32 conferences. So that's half the spots right there. And the rest are just at large bids, meaning it's just whoever the people who pick think should be in. So unless you win the ACC, you got to play pretty good. Um, and, you know, 70s is like, as I said, not really in the bubble, but trying to get into the bubble. Um, our next, I'd, I'd say one of the biggest things that we need to focus on for the season, what I kind of project the team to look like, is beating the teams that we should, but we're probably going to lose to the teams that we shouldn't beat. Because our roster is not really built to be one that is like, have this sort of star power that's like, okay, like UNC, R.J. Davis, go get us a bucket. Armando Bacot, go get us a bucket. We kind of just got a lot of solid role players. And I feel like that kind of explains and is the reason of why our losses aren't bad, but we're not having any great wins, which is why the biggest thing that we need to pay attention to is beating teams that we you know, should be beating uh, or that are close to us, like the pits of the world, Virginia Tech. Virginia. Wake Forest is the game that we play tomorrow, I believe, as I'm recording this. I'm going to that game. Wake Forest is on the bubble right now. Uh, I think they're much better than what their ranking says, 
Um, but they're on the bubble. Same with Miami. All these teams are ACC teams. Virginia, Virginia Tech, Pitt. Those are also with us. We need to win, like, at least a majority of these games to be like, hey, we are above them and we can get into the tournament. Because teams like Miami, they could lose to, you know, random teams, but they could also beat, like, the Clemsons, who's which Clemson is a tournament team, Dukes, because they have such you know high volume of shooting, they could explode. So we need to beat those kind of teams to win when it comes to time, you know, to pick the best 32. They look at state and they're like, okay, they did this against these ACC teams. I think we should put them ahead. Um, so that's kind of an outlook of the, of the team. But the in terms of, or this like overall team in terms of the season, but the team itself, I think the lineup, as I said, I think we're, I think we're too deep for our own good. Like, we don't, we don't, as I said, have a go-to guy, guard or big man. I mean, Horn and Burns are the two best, but neither are good enough, I think, to be consistent go-to stars. And that's, that's why we have depth this year. But I feel like Kevin Keats doesn't really know who to fully throw out there sometimes. Like, I'm watching the UNC game. Um, Michael O'Connell needs more minutes. When he's the best passer on the team, and when the team goes on really long scoring droughts, it's it's because guys are just trying to create their own shot. Like, go look at Burns. Anytime he gets a score, it's not because someone's throwing him a lob. He gets a pass on the elbow, backs the guy up, does a few moves, and either does a fade or goes to lay it up. Or Horn. He's ISO with a guy, making moves, cross up, step back, and shooting. If they're making their own shot because they're, none of them are really passers. When O'Connell comes in, he I feel like he does a pretty good job of at least keeping the tempo steady and not giving – and, like, trying to create open shots because a lot of times we're forcing. Like, UNC plays great defense. We were taking horrendous mid-range shots that were just so bad, and they were not going in. I think Horn was, like, 1 for 10 at some point in the game, and it's because he was just taking a lot of hard shots. We weren't really getting anything open. Um, and even then, I feel like Keats isn't doing a good job of riding the hot hand. Like, DJ Burns had three points in a row, three buckets in a row, one-on-one, -on -one, and they just pulled him out and stopped going to him. So I, I'm just – I'm not sure if he really feels like he knows who to throw out there at what point. And I think MJ Rice needs more minutes too. He's a guy that we identified in the beginning of the season – He's like a combination of a big guy, but someone who can still score. And we don't really have that. You know, I mean, we have, like I said, we have a ton of roles, like a ton. Uh, I, I mean, with what? Taylor and Parker, those are pretty similar in terms of just like athletic forward slash guards. Middlebrooks, um, I like him, but he's obviously like a, just a big defender, you know, um, but he should definitely be getting out there. I, th I think we should just be going at nine deep at the most um, and just go into the game. Kevin Keats, what he should be doing, have at least only going nine deep. Go to the look at what the other team has. Say, okay, this is their style of play and throw out guys that are going to, you know, match up to it. If they're a high volume, high shooting, like high active team, it should be Taylor, Parker, uh, Morcel, and a combination of, you know, Horn with O'Connell in there. If they're a bigger team that kind of likes to slow the tempo down, get Middlebrooks and Diara in there more. Um, we just, we don't have the star power to just keep the same, be like, okay, I trust these guys, just throw them in there. Kevin Keats needs to understand, we got a lot of role players, we don't have a lot of stars. And you got to mix up the rotation rather than just defaulting to one specific lineup. Yeah, I agree. That's something that, I think I had a hard time at the beginning of the season identifying who was going to be the, the standout and, you know, who wasn't going to get minutes, and the answer was neither. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd say Horn questions. has been, like, good. He's had really good moments. Yeah. Burns, he's had really good moments, which is why I pointed them out. But they're not, like, you know, look at the – if you look at the UNC duo that just came here, they're nowhere close to that with Baycott and, and Davis. They're just not. But we're deeper, so we need to – we need – we need to use, uh, utilize our depth more. I don't know. So maybe, I know a lot of people don't like Kevin Keats, but I don't think he's horrible, but he's not doing himself uh, any favors right now. It's just we need to, 
it'll be really telling if we lose like a majority of these ACC games. I think his hot his seat is going to be pretty hot if he doesn't win them. You have anything else for basketball? No, that that's was it? it. I know it's a lot, but yeah. I yeah. had a it, it, we we didn't really get to speak on it, and that UNC game definitely was like okay, this is what we yeah we need to go over. Okay, well, uh, coming up in basketball, what are we looking at? Well, for, for both I didn't write all this stuff down. I do know that we play, um, as I said, Wake Forest right. next, which I'll be at that game. I'm right. trying to go to get as many games as possible, but we're kind of on the ACC stretch, playing a lot of ACC teams. Um, I think the next one after that is teams that I had mentioned, Virginia Tech and Virginia. Like These next three games, two of them are at home, one of them is at Virginia. I think we beat Virginia earlier in the year. We got to win at least two of these. Have to. Mm-hmm. So hopefully the two on our home floor. Um, but after that, like Syracuse, Miami, Georgia Tech, Pitt. These are all middle of the pack teams, which is good for us. But we don't, you know, our next hardest game is like at UNC and then versus Duke, which is at the end of the season. Which, to be honest, I I don't really. <laughs> I, I don't. Know, maybe we progress a ton. It's kind of hard to look forward. But I don't know if we're uh, taking down Carolina or Duke. Unfortunately, this season. Yeah. Well, on that note, I guess we'll close it out for the day, and we'll we'll come back and revisit those questions later on. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening to Light It Red, and we'll you know we'll be back. We'll see you next week. Music in this podcast was Jonas Hipper's King of Sports and Vibe and Sneaky, licensed under Creative Commons from the Free Music Archive.